Hello everybody, this is John from day one and here we are with our third and final installment in our club belt swing tutorial series. Uh, in this installment we're actually going to do the full club belt swing. Um, so in the first installment we covered our structural basis. In the second installment we went over pattering, the proper pattering of the leg drive, the loading in the back position, and the hip recruitment pushing all the way through, eliminating the arms from the movement. Here, uh, if you've been practicing the previous installment, uh, organically you're already probably moving into the full club belt swing. So, uh, a few key things uh, that I find a lot of beginners get wrong uh, with the swing when we're actually in the full movement is one, the loading in the back position, okay? Uh, two, the use of the arms when powering through. And then three, the proper dumping on the way down from the apex back into back position, and they're all tied together. So, show you the uh, correct club bell swing first, and then we'll go over the structural points in the full movement. So, we'll approach it, silver back position, walk it through, right, to that rear load. All right, now we're gonna start off by doing a few deadlifts with the dump, just a pattern of movement, all right? And to build organically, when you're ready, Okay, uh, so the first thing is that load in the back position, okay? If we've been practicing our structure and patterning the movement through the deadlift, it should be an issue, right? Well, once we add in the momentum of the full movement, it tends to resurface sometimes, okay? And so what we're looking to not do in that position, if I can do it, is an upswing, <clears throat> okay? And this is what you'll see if you're coming from kettlebell swinging, a more muted hip pitch at the bottom, okay? If you look at the back of the club. So we don't want this, we'd rather have this. Okay, so what this requires is a more proper break or fold at the hips. So if you put your hands right around your belt level, find your hip bones, all right, shoulder width stance, break back and pinch your fingers between your lower abdomen and your thighs. This kind of a sit back is what you're looking for, all right? That kind of a sit back loads the glutes, hamstrings a lot more, okay? dumps the club back at an angle much, much more. It keeps the head low as opposed to the head high. But what you'll find, the benefit, while it's tougher, okay, the benefit, again, allows for more powerful hip and leg recruitment, okay, and a higher and easier club extension at the top. What this does is helps us avoid uh, the second part, the second situation uh, that a lot of new club swingers kind of miss or get wrong or do incorrectly, uh, and that's the arm lock out uh, front or the use of the arm. If you've got the proper loading in the back and recruitment and drive out of the back position, your arms aren't needed at all to lift that weight up even as you get up higher in the weight, okay? So what you're looking to do when those arms extend out is to not bend the elbows, is to not trap shrug or shoulder shrug up, is to keep the shoulders down to keep the arms locked out, the elbow pit extended, okay? So the tricep stays extended, shoulder pack stays down. Again, these are the same structural components that we went over in the silver back position that are still here, okay? And what this does in this position, rotating the elbow pit, locking of the arm, squeeze the tricep, and a locking of the lat helps to, along with the club, create traction or tractional element. The club is pulling out this way. If you think about it like there's a dark board in front of you and you're pegging the dart, pushing the club out, club is flying that way, shoulders are pulling back and down, creates traction and 
this is one of the key differences or benefits that uh, club level training has over other modalities is that tractional element. You can uh, strength train, yet open up the body at the same time, while as a lot of other modalities um, create compression of the joints and actually close the body off and damage the soft tissue while you're training. Okay, so that's the second thing, is keeping that arm lock out. The third thing is the dump on the way down. Um, <clears throat> Big thing that happens with the dump is that the club belt eats the dirt. Whether it eats the dirt in front of you or eats the dirt behind you, um, it happens for one, usually one of two reasons. The first one is the knees dropping forward, right? So we're losing structure. We're not pitching and sitting back at the hips because you're dropping forward. The club is dropping down in front of you because it can't move behind you because you're not allowing it to, okay? Uh, the second reason, this is usually more common for a lot of people, at least that I work with, is um, you pitch back or sit back too early, okay? So, what it should look like is once the club comes up, right, you wait as long as possible to pitch back. So, once the club comes towards the thighs, right, the club's going to get right about parallel to your thighs. That's when you fold over to allow the club to come through. You fold under the club, okay? The club then loads in back position. From here, the hips, the leg drive, powers forward first, and then the arms follow, right? So if you're doing it wrong and breaking too early, right, not good for the club or the floor, uh, club eats dirt either in front or in the back position. A lot of times what will happen is you'll round over as a result, or the club will eat dirt because you're rounding over. So again, that structural component in the first video is really the key. That maintains the whole way through. If you've got that locked in, this is a non-issue, okay? So, power up, break, break. You break and load. Power up, break and load.